All right, we're looking at a problem in Al Cuoco's book, Mathematical Connections, a companion for teachers and others, uh, in the section on complex maps, uh, section 3.5. And we're asked to consider two regions in the complex plane. Region 1 is a circle centered at the point 1, 0 with a radius of 1. And region 2 is a line uh, that does not pass through the origin. Uh, the y-intercept and the slope are not particularly important, but this one looks like in the book it has a y-intercept of about negative one-third and a slope of negative one-half. The question is what will happen to these regions when we apply these functions? And there are two functions. One is a, a rotation by pi over four with a scale factor of two, a dilation of two, and the other is squaring the complex number. I'd like to use GeoGebra to investigate these questions. So to do the first region, I'll do a circle um, centered at the point 0, 1, no, 1, 0, uh, with a radius of 1. There's my circle. And what I want to do is my strategy is going to be put a point on the object I'll call it a point A there. And then this point is given in rectangular coordinates. I would like a complex number with those coordinates. And so I'll type down here in the input bar A equals the X coordinate of point A plus the Y coordinate of point A uh, times that imaginary unit I, uh, which is right here. And now that point A is at the same location as um, the rectangular coordinate A. So this, this uh, coordinate plane, this Cartesian plane, uh, has now become a coordinate plane for the um, complex numbers as well. So I'm going to hide uh, that complex number A. And now I want to apply the first function, uh, which was 2 times the cosine of pi over 4, plus that imaginary unit i times the sine of pi over 4 times th that complex number input, which we've named a. And it gives me z1. If I take point a and drag it around the circle, I can see where z1, uh, where it maps to. So it looks like this circle region C, region 1, is mapping to another circle. Um, I can trace this point, show the trace, and now I trace out and I can see what that circle is. Uh, it is going to have a radius of 2 uh, because the function uh, involved 2 times uh, the length of the vector, and then the 45 degree rotation can be seen here where point A is on the x-axis. If I were to connect Z1 to the origin, that would be 45 degrees. The other function, uh, Z2, or I'm sorry, um, the other function G of x was to square that. So let me hide this and move my graphics view a little bit to erase those traces. Let's try this one, uh, a squared. a squared is now 2 squared goes to 4. That seems to make sense. And if I move point a, I see that it, well, I thought it was going to make a circle, but it looks like it's curving in there. So not quite a circle. Uh, we can trace those. I'll hold uh, right click and turn the trace on and now we see this interesting um, tr this interesting map this circle when you square this circular region the points on this circle map to uh, this locus of z2 if we take a different um, a different region not the circular region and see what happens under here. I'll just turn off those points and put a different region. Um, 
it looked to me like it was negative uh, one half x minus one third in the book. There's the line that looks sort of like that line. I'll put a point on that line. I'll transform that point into a complex number or ask the computer to interpret it as a complex number. x coordinate of b plus the y coordinate of b times i Okay. Oh, I already have a line. I can't call it B. That's what it is. Uh, we have not used the letter D, so there it is, D. And let me go back to Z1 and just change this from A to D. And Z2, change it to D squared. So if we're looking at the first map, there's Z1, which was the dilation by 2, so, and then a rotation of 45 degrees. So that point Z1 is twice as far away from the origin as point B is. And it is 45 degrees um, this angle from the origin to B, if I rotate it 45 degrees, uh, that would be from the origin to Z1. So I see that this line maps to a line. The other function, which was squaring, if I slide point B along the line, I get... Oh my goodness, that's interesting. Not a line, but something that looks like a parabola that's somehow been rotated from a standard position. So that's, that's what we get, and that's how you can use GeoGebra to do these mappings.